Hey, so welcome back students. Let's go ahead and explore the discussion of how do you distinguish between a system and its surroundings. And so let's kind of take these uh, two definitions or these two words one by one and let's begin with the system. So when we talk about system, this is going to be the focal point uh, or the focus of our studies. And so whatever it is that we're investigating, uh, this is what the system is. Okay, so for example, this could be something like a piece of metal that you're heating up and you're placing it within a beaker of water. The beaker of water and the metal that you placed in it, that would be the system. Or it could be, for example, any reactions that you occur or carry out in a uh, jar, for example. That would be a um, an example of a system. So whatever the focus is, of our studies is what the system is. So uh, just to illustrate this here, um, so it could be something like if I had that beaker here and I have inside this beaker, let's say I have uh, a liquid and I've got some reactions. This entire thing here, all of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a purple line around it. All of this here is the system, okay? Everything beyond that then is going to be what we call the surroundings. And so that's the second term here. And so the way we define this, the surroundings, this is everything beyond the system. And so that, that would mean all of the area extending out from the, um, the actual system of study all of that is going to be the uh, surroundings. So if we're talking about a jar with a chemical reaction, then everything outside the jar, that can include the room, that could include the uh, table that the, the beaker or the jar is sitting on. It could include the building that the room is located in. So all of those things is considered the surroundings. Typically, we only use this term in reference to the immediate surroundings, but you can then expand it. Now, whenever we talk about system and surroundings, remember that this is relative. So we got to make sure that we understand this. These are relative terms. And that is that the system could include not only the little uh, jar with material inside it, but maybe it also includes in that the table that it's sitting on. Maybe that's the system. And so let's go ahead and underline this relative to the uh, room that it's in. And so you can either go in scale downward or you can go in scale upward relative to what you're examining. So if we're examining here not just the uh, the small system of the of the jar or the flask or the beaker, but rather what if we're looking at the system to be the entire room relative to the building. So the system then would be the room and the surroundings would be the other areas in that building that is not included in the one room. So that's a quick little way that you can distinguish between system and the surroundings. And so what I want to talk to you about now is talk to you a little bit about what kinds of systems are there. And so in the discussion of systems here, uh, we want to make sure that we understand here that there are three types. Okay, and so the three types are as follows. You're either going to have an open system, you're going to have a closed system, or you're going to have an isolated system. Okay, so let's look at these one by one. An open system is going to be a system in which you can freely exchange matter or energy. So we're going to say here matter or energy is freely exchanged. And it's going to be freely exchanged with the surroundings. That's the key thing here. Now the other item here is a closed system. A closed system is slightly different in the sense that a closed system is going to be able to exchange energy but not matter. So uh, it can freely exchange energy. But here's the kicker here, but not 
matter. And the reason this is so is because it's closed. So you have a closed container, so that means you cannot have any loss or gain of any particles, molecules, any kind of matter cannot go in or go out and therefore it stays constant. And so, but there is no exchange of matter. But energy on the other hand, that can be lost because of the uh, transference of energy from one form to or from one body to another. And then lastly, the isolated system. The isolated system cannot exchange either one of these items. Cannot exchange energy nor matter because it's isolated. Okay, And so because of that, you're not going to have any kind of uh, exchange between any of the, uh, the surroundings or with the system in either direction. Okay, So this is a good way to kind of frame this discussion with regards to system and surroundings. We've discussed the three types of systems that are available, open, closed, and isolated. And so in the next couple of videos, we're going to learn more about this topic within thermal chemistry and see how we can expand on our understanding of enthalpy, work, and various other variables. So if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, keep watching, keep learning, and we'll see you in the next video.